Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've heard about very serious changes in Uzbekistan. And now I'd like to show you a very interesting video about seven most interesting facts about Samarkand, which is the most ancient cities in the Middle Asian region. And for this video, uh, uh, one site, one website, uh, www.go2us uh, uh, really helped me. And if you have any opportunities or possibilities to work in Uzbekistan, uh, like in the sphere of business or just investing, uh, please go to this website, www.go2us, uh, and uh, press the button, and you'll see all the information about uh, business and investing in Uzbekistan. And welcome to our project. Go to us. Thank you. I've heard about Samarkand city, a lot of wonderful legends, but I didn't know that all of them are the truth. Alexander, Alexander the Great. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Samarkand city. My name is Otabek. I'm a film actor in Uzbekistan, and this is my friend wh whose name is Fait. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to make a great video for you, and you're going to love it. Sure. You know, uh, Said is uh, he works as a professional tour guide in Samarkand more than five years. I am not a professional guide. Oh, for you. Yes, <laughs> but I've been in more than 50 countries. I've visited more than 200 cities in the world. And just one year ago, I started the process of making special videos about the most interesting facts about all of the countries where I've been before. That's a great job. Thank you. Uh, you know, I prepared already about uh, special video relics about uh, the United States of America. Oh, wow. About the United Kingdom. Fantastic. And now I'm going to start to do it here in Uzbekistan. That's a brilliant idea, I tell you. Because there are a lot of uh, ancient cities here, like Bukhara, Khiva, Fergana, Kokand, Tashkent. But I'm going to start from Samarkand city. You know why? I have three reasons for that. Yeah, tell me. It is not because you are my friend and you are originally from Samarkand. <laughs> You're a good kitty. <laughs> no, no, yes. I have three very serious reasons for that. Okay, we're ready to. Number one. When I've been here many years ago, yep. during my childhood, uh, I, you know, I had a rest to the very special camp. Salatinka. Oh, wow. Famous. Yes. That time I saw that panoramic view and in my imagination, Samarkand was one of the most ancient cities in the world, like uh, Rome, Pompeii, Giza. It's this is really number true. one. Yeah. Number two, a Samarkand city is a role model, uh, you know, as a city where the representative of all of the nations can live together as a big family. How many, uh, you know, uh, kinds of, you know, uh, uh, nations live here? More than 100, I think. Yeah, there are over than 100 nationalities living in Samarkand. And there are Uzbeks, Tajiks, Persians, Iranians, and Germans, Polish, Koreans, Tata, And many, many others. And etc. Yeah. yeah. And number three. Samarkand city is an excellent example as a uh, religious tolerancy. Because here we can meet not just uh, Muslim uh, mosques, but also a Jewish synagogues, Armenian Apostle Church, Christian churches, and I think a lot of you know uh, you know buildings yes. uh, concerning a religious culture. Yes. Yes, that's really true. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start our very special video for you: uh, the most interesting seven facts about Samarkand city. Okay, dear friends, enjoy the video. Thank you. Thank you. So 
the fact number one is a mausoleum of Temerwan, of Emir Timur, yes? Yes, one of beautiful mausoleums of Samarkand, maybe in the world. I think yes. So I think we have to go inside, yeah? Yes, sure. So, okay, let's go. Please. Yeah, the first mausoleum was constructed for Timur's lovely grandson. Oh yeah. Muhammad Sultan, who should have been ruler mm -hmm. of the Timur. But he passed away very young, in very young yes. age. And that's why uh, Timur decided to construct a mausoleum for his lovely grandson. And later, after two years, Timur was buried there as well. Yep. So, uh, in which year all the construction work has been finished? So, it was finished in 1424 by Mirza Uluk Bek, who oh. was lovely grandson of Timur as well. A very famous astronomer. Yes, he was a really good astronomer and really smart person mm. of the history of Uzbekistan. Who's been killed by his son. Yes, he was killed unfortunately by his son and that's why the history is completely changed. Abdul Latif. Abdul Latif, yes. That guy, that names of his, that, his son. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go inside and I'd like to know, you know, during the former Soviet Union, uh, we knew about Amir Timur as a very evil guy. He, yeah, was, he was super really aggressive. And he was super infamous at the time. Yeah, he and had it is so good that, uh, you know, the former Soviet Union has been collapsed. Yes. And now Uzbekistan and all the post-communist countries, they can have own history, a real history. Completely agree with you. In Soviet time, Timur had a negative ideology mm -hmm. and he wasn't popular as now he, mm -hmm. in Uzbekistan and uh, after the independence we got a lot of real information about Timur which makes Timur Timur. Yes, it was uh, in after 1991 yes. when uh, the Soviet Union has been collapsed and Uzbekistan obtained own independence. Yes. Oh, right. that is a very famous stone, which is Kuktash. Yes, Kuktash. To translate from Turkish, that means blue stone. Yes. It, even it's not blue. The, every single thing was blue in Timur's time. Even the flag, even the palace of Timur, Kuksaray. Which century? 14, 15 centuries. You know, you can touch it. You know, uh, Timur and his generation was crowned on it. Oh, really? Yeah. And so Timur, Timur been here? Yeah, Timur been here. We're so close to that place. Mm -hmm. Where was Timur? Nice. And after Timur were crowned, second dynasty, Shaybanis. After the Shaybanis were crowned, mm -hmm. Emirs of Bukhara. Ah, he was the last one. Grandfather of yes. the last one. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, the grandfather of the last one. Uh, he was uh, Muzaffar, Muzaffar Khan. Khan. Yes. Emir Muzaffar Khan, that's right. Okay. <laughs> and his granddad was Amir Alim Khan. Yes. Oh. Grandson. Grandson, yeah, yes, yeah. That's nice. So here, what was the idea of Mirza Ulgbek? It shouldn't it should be something more, yes? Here. Yes. Uh, in Timur's time he was constructed uh, Madrasa, right in the left side. Uh, okay. From the right side, he was planning to construct Honako, which was a dormitory for the students. And in between two buildings that was situated Ivan, like a terrace. Mm -hmm. So after the uh, death of the love the grandson the terrace was reconstructed and it was converted to mausoleum of Timur and mm -hmm. Timur's family mm -hmm. so now we'll see a little bit later the tomb of Amir Timur of Tamerlan it is so exciting and now I think we're gonna see the map the map of Timur's empire the map of Timur's empire it was so super huge and now we can know why the former Soviet Union hated Tamerlan. Okay? So, Mr. Otabe, we know uh, by the history there were a lot of conquerors. Yes. And Timur was one of them. Mm -hmm. the Genghis Khan, mm -hmm. as now as a King is Khan, he founded the biggest empire in the world. Yeah. And the second biggest empire was founded mm -hmm. by Alexander the Great. The yes. third large empire was founded by Amir Timur. Yes. This is Amir Timur. Yes. And this is the Timur's empire's map. And here we can see the territory of his empire. Mm -hmm. So I know this part. It is Constantinople, which is yes. Istanbul. Turkey. Yes. Here is India. Mm -hmm. North Pakistan. And here we can see Central Asia. Mm -hmm. And right here, Afghanistan. Iran, Iran Iraq, Iraq, Syria. Syria and part of Egypt. It's a so huge, huge empire of its time. Yeah.
really huge. So let's go, you know, I'm so excited because I'd like to see with my own eyes his tomb. You know, it was a very interesting historical fact about uh, opening his tomb and starting the World War II, the part concerning with the former Soviet Union. Which is a really, really interesting story. Yes, but we will tell about that a little bit later. So, off to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Follow me. Wow. Here we got the one of beautiful domes in the world. It was completely covered with gold. Uh, approximately five kilograms. Yes, five kilos of gold was used for decorating the dome. Yeah. And one more thing. Mm -hmm. The walls and reliefs which are coming out, they are paper mache. Yeah. Some are concealed paper. Yes. And we, where we go to the factory, actually. Sure. So here we can see the tomb of Amir Timur. Yes, Timur, right yes. in the middle. So, I know about his teacher, who is here. It was some tradition, yes, for that time, yeah? That yes. Uh, was teachers had huge respect, mm -hmm. because of that time, teachers were really educated people, and students mm -hmm. respected them really good. Mm -hmm. I've had a special legend about this stone. Okay. It has been stored by Iranian Sheikh, oh, Nadir really? Shah. Can you share it? Uh, I think you know about that story very well. It was in 1747 oh, wow. when Nadir Shah stole this uh, stone and moved it to his motherland. And that time he had a lot of problems. It was very uh, serious problems with his uh, with health of his uh, daughter. Ah, daughter. And yes. it was uh, several times uh, earthquakes in Iran. Oh, gosh. and that time he saw some dream where some holy power uh, told him that he had uh, returned back this uh, stone to Samarkand and he'd done it. Mm -hmm. And after that, you know, he didn't have any problems. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, but here, it's the most legendary guy for me. For exactly. Me well. uh, really? Oh, nice. You, you have a very good taste, you know. Here, the greatest astronomer for that time an astronomer, Mirza Ulbek. Here. He has, he has some, he has some nickname as uh, Eastern version of Thomas Jefferson. Yes. That is uh, another teacher, yes? yes? Another mentor of Amir Timur. One of religious teachers of Timur, whose name was Sheikh Said Umar, who was Sufi. Ah, but this, this teacher? He, he was spiritual master of mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. And his name was? Mir Said Barakah. Mir Said Barakah. Yes. So, Said. Yes. It is a very famous legendary fact about the opening of his tomb. Yeah, it was the grave in, of Timur was opened. Yes. Yeah. It was in 1941, in the uh, twenty. 22nd of June. Yes, you're right. Uh, what time is that? It was exactly the time when Hitler attacked the yes. uh, Soviet Union. Yes, it's exact that day. And so what was the story? That oh, uh, yes. Joseph Stalin, yes, it was in 1939, he sent a special expedition here with a very famous anthropologist, Michael Gerasimov. Yes. yes? So, and then? So, uh, they had an exact plan. Mm -hmm. They had to open the grave. Mm -hmm. because uh, they were expecting a lot of gold mm -hmm. and in the same time they wanted to because he the you know he he was ready for the war yeah. that's why it was some collapse and crisis in the former soviet union yes. and he thought there are a lot of gold here i can use it for the war yes, yes. it was uh, a real reason yes. but was it some a fake reason as well yes uh, they were kind of planning to recreate a portrait of timur because he was a really interesting person who had 256 military campaigns and thousand wars and never lost anyone mm -hmm. can you imagine yes so uh, maybe it made it mm -hmm. forced uh, Stalin mm -hmm. to open the grave mm -hmm. 
So uh, that's okay. why the grave was opened in 1941, mm -hmm. in 22nd of June. But the expedition group was founded two years earlier than yeah. they opened the grave. Yes. So in that time, I've heard that here were some uh, old men. Yeah, before opening. Yes, uh, and they warned them. Man. Yeah. Don't open this tomb because there is uh, some power, yes, uh, an evil power yes. can go and outside and the war will start. Yes, yes, that's true. And they ignored it. Yes. Yeah, they didn't even pay attention. Yes. You know, that time was uh, my teacher as well, Malik Kayumov. At the time, he was one of the most famous... Famous person. Yes, he was a film director and a cameraman. Uh, he took part in this expedition and he shared with me about this story. You know, he passed away when he was 99. Oh, wow. You know, he had a really interesting life. And he, after that, he took part, of course, in the, in the war. And he met uh, Mr. Zhukov. Oh, yeah. Mr. Zhukov. I've heard about him. Yes, and uh, he shared with Mr. Zhukov about this story. And after that, Mr. Zhukov uh, called to Joseph Stalin. And after that, all his tomb was in Leningrad, oh, in St. Wow. Petersburg. And Mr. Stalin, he gave a special order because everything should be returned back here. But before, his body was in the special military helicopter. Oh, wow. And that helicopter being in the, all the places where the war been that time. And after that, it was in 1943 February. Do you know I about see. a very special event at that time? When the Soviet Union uh, started to won? Yes, and uh, the army of Hitler, yeah. they were turning back. Yes, it was in Stalingrad. Oh yeah, close to Russia, close yeah. to... Yeah, the time, really yeah, that time, uh, we know very well that Tamerlan's tomb was here in its own place. Yeah, they turned back. Yeah, yes. That's true. Is that a legend? I know, I don't know. But my teacher, who been here, shared with me personally. That's why I think it is a historical fact. Yes. So, and the last story, uh, what was the last years of uh, Timur's so, life? Yes, uh, the last years of Timur were really interesting. He conquered Turkey, he conquered India, and he was planning to conquer India as uh, in China. In so, China as well, yeah. Yeah, he wanted to conquer China. Mm -hmm. uh, he was 69 years old, can you imagine? 69. And China uh, didn't ready for this yeah, war. They were not ready for the no. uh, mm -hmm. attack of Timur, mm -hmm. and they were not ready at all. And mm -hmm. Timur was going to China, and right? Who Just one China? thing stopped yes. Timur, death. which is death, yes. yes. So, uh, all the you know, scientists in history, they've got some special idea. What yes. kind of deer? Yeah, which is really a uh, common uh, local anecdote. Yes. And our people say that if Timur could live for a couple of years more, nowadays Chinese people could speak in Uzbek. In Uzbek language. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, I've heard a very famous uh, proverb, a modern proverb about China, that God uh, created just the sky and the ground. Uh, other things made in China. <laughs> That's true. So, and it was uh, the continue of fact number one about Samarkand. Let's go on. Let's go. The mosque of Bibi Hanum in Samarkand. No, the mosque of Timur, actually. Why? Because... But everybody knows as a Bibi Hanum mosque. Yes, that's true. But in, right in front of the mosque, there yep. is situated the mausoleum of the lovely wife of Timur. Ah, Bibi she Hanum. was buried here. Yes. In fact, of that, uh, the mosque called Bibi Hanum mosque. Because usually people, they used to call Mosque of Timur, which yeah. is located right in front of the mausoleum of Bibi Hanum. And they decided to make a short, short, short and turned Bibi Hanum Mosque. Okay, and I've heard that uh, there are five terms there. That's right. Yes? Yeah. And which one? Bibi Hanum, uh -huh. mother of Bibi Hanum, mm -hmm. and 
niece of Amir Timur and two wives. Yes. Okay, now I uh, see Siap Bazaar. It is a very famous market here in Samarkand. That's true. And so it, it was so convenient for them, for people who worked here, yes, for every yes. Friday. Yes, even we uh, use the fact that mm -hmm. Samarkand was on the Silk Road. Mm -hmm. uh, the Friday mosque was really important for uh, in Samarkand people and traders for Samarkand as well. Yep. Because they had to come to mosque and pray in right close location to the bazaar. Mm -hmm. Gives us opportunity to pray mm -hmm. really fast and easy. Yeah. And at what year uh, it has been built? I think it was uh, 13th, 99th and 14th or, t or 4. That's true. Just five years. Just five years. But for, the, uh, but for those periods of time, it is so short. That's true. Timur personally forced workers to finish the work really fast. But just for the uh, first uh, couple of months, he controlled this process. That's because true. it was after the Indian uh, attacked, yes? Yes. And he was super rich because yeah. after India, yeah? Yes. After conquering India, he got a lot of money, a lot of... Uh, Mm -hmm. Gold. Gold. Yep. Which was really important for yeah. constructing such a huge construction. Yep. So, and after that, just the first couple of months, he controlled the, the whole the process of construction. Yes. But after, he came to Uthman Empire. Yeah. He went to Uthman's Empire, to Turkey. Mm -hmm. He destroyed Uthman's Empire. Mr. Bayezid. Yes, exactly. Ah, uh, you know, in my country, a lot of people watch these very famous uh, TV shows. It's soap opera. Um, yeah. It is a uh, hundred years of, I don't know, about uh, Sultan Suleiman. Yes. Very famous, yeah? Grandson of Bayezid Sultan. Really? Yes. Nice. Timur destroyed that famous guy's grandfather. Yeah. And, and his grandson is a hero in our country. Yes. How okay. come? Uh, yeah. No choice. No choice. So I've heard that 15,000 people can pray here at the same time. Yes, at that time it's the, one of the biggest mosques of Central Asia. Oh really? Yes, 15,000 people. Can you imagine? I can't imagine. So even in the court, yes. it were uh, 10,000 people. Yeah? Yes, in the court. Every are, Friday. Yeah. Okay, so I've heard very famous uh, historical facts about this place. Oh, they understand from the yes. Quran. Oh, really, really true. Yes, uh, a Quran, uh, which was written in 7th century, been here, yes. yes. And the medical fact. The what medical was? fact. So we're going to tell you about it. Yes, please. So some people have some problems with their kids. Yes. I mean, they don't have kids. Yeah. So in this case, people come, travelers, when mm -hmm. uh, they have the same problem, when they face the problem, we tell them. Uh, Just this, for the women. It is, women. yeah. Yeah. So women, what should they do? They should go through this bigger hole for boys. Uh, for the right side. Yes, they can choose. Uh huh. If they want boy or girl. Uh huh. The future sex. Yes. Of a that's child. True. Uh, for the left side, it's a girl. Yes. But I've heard that for man, really? it's another rule. It's news for me. Yes. So a man should stand over here. Like here. Yes. Yep. And if he wants to have a son, yes. he has to go from there, three times circle. Yes. Uh, for the girl one, the left side. Okay. I have a dream, like, you know, Martin Luther King once said, I'd like to have a son. Let's do it right now. Let's so, do it. Okay. So it is the first circle, yeah? Yes, it's the first circle. So that's the main part of this church, yeah? Of the mosque. Of the mosque, sorry. Of the Muslim church or, or mosque, yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, okay. And this one? This is the small assistant mosque from both sides of the bigger mosque. They are situated, constructed two small assistant mosques. Mm -hmm. So it was a very famous uh, legend about uh, Amir Timur, about Tamerwan, yes. uh, before he attacked India. Okay. Yes, yeah. it was with 20 innocent girls. Could All you please, right. sharing yeah. is caring, please do it. Oh gosh, okay. It's really an um, interesting legend, Yeah, uh, but it wasn't proved by the history. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. We can and, check. Yeah. So once upon a time when he was planning mm -hmm. to uh, attack India, he received a message from the ruler of India. Yeah. And they were written about uh, that Timur is in pretty uh, old age. Yes. And uh, who knows what happens in after a few days. 
So he says. But he, you know, gonna uh, attack the yes, India. Yes. So that was the first circle. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, the oh, ruler mm -hmm. of India uh, says, if you're really smart, if you're really a powerful man, still yeah, and healthy. In healthy, yes. Uh, I'll make a gift. Oh. Yes, I'll send you twenty. Anything else? Yes. Wow. I'd like to be instead of Amir Timur. So, so uh, he for what? Yeah, he says, if you can uh, turn me mm -hmm. then back mm -hmm. uh, as a pregnant. Yes. So in during the month, yeah. You, during the month. Yeah. In thirty days to, to any girls. Uh huh. And I can believe that you are still strong and still healthy. Mm -hmm. So uh, in t exact twenty days, Timur uh, turned back this. 20 girls pregnant. Can you imagine? Wow! He was older than 60. And it is the third circle, just for you know, for the information. Yeah. Wow. So 20 pregnant girls. You see how this stand works? Yes, yes. I think he's been here so many times, yeah? Yes. Morning, evening, and oh. afternoon maybe. Yes, 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 exactly. <laughs> so uh, I've heard that a uh, hundred uh, elephants uh, took part in the process of construction. Is yes. that correct? Yes, there were 100 and just 95 of them, they survived. Why? Because the climate was different than in India. Uh -huh. so ah, yeah, they, w they were from India. Yes, they were from India, they were moved from India and uh, they didn't have almost the same conditions mm -hmm. like uh, in India. So uh, five of them, they couldn't survive. Uh, survived only 95 and mm -hmm. they were used as a assistance for moving big rocks from uh, different mountains for construction of the mosque. Nice. And it was the circle number three. Yes. I think that we will have a son, 100 person. Yes. Yes. As Timur had. Yes. So let's go on to the another fact. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you. See you. So it is Rajasthan Square. Yeah. I've heard that every uh, city has own a central part. For example, uh, in London it is uh, the Trafalgar Square. In Moscow it is a red, red square. square. Yes. In Uzbekistan it is Tashkent, a square of independence. But here in Samarkand, uh, the central part is Rajasthan. Yes. I I can way. I say? Can I say that it is not just? Uh, historical heart of Samarkand. It is historical heart of Uzbekistan. Yes, that's true. I can confidently say that Registan Square is a center of Central Asia, not only Uzbekistan. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the, during by the history, uh, during the time of uh, Amir Timur, Tamerlan, uh, it was here just a market. Yeah, he, he was a big bazaar which mm -hmm. was moved by Ulugbek in 15th century, in the beginning of 15th century. But before Registan, it is the word of Reg, it is what? It's a sand. It's a sand uh, from a Persian language. Yes, it's from Persian language and it means sandy place. Yes. So the first, uh, Mos uh, the first um, madrasa here, the drasa, yes. here is uh, Ulugbek's madrasa, yes. yes? The madrasa of Ulugbek and he constructed madrasa in the beginning of 15th century. Yes. And it was in uh, 1417, uh, during the 1420. Yes, that's true. There are a lot of rooms here. I've heard 77 rooms. It was like a modern university. Yes, it has all conditions for students who want to study here. Like a campus, yeah? Like a campus. They had dormitory, they had library, they had teacher's room and lecture rooms as well. And a lot of famous people uh, studied and worked here. Yes. Alisher Navai who is the founder of Uzbek literature. Yes. Uh, yeah. Rumi, Jami. Yeah. Yes. Nice. So here is another one, yes. Sherdor. One of beautiful madrasas of Samarkand, Sherdor Madrasa. And they have almost similar uh, out view. They have almost similar facade. As a respect, it was constructed as a mirror uh, yeah, 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 yes, at the mirror principle, yeah. Yes. Almost the same, yeah? Yes, mm -hmm. that's true. But the difference is, 
uh, just entrance portal was decorated with the tigers mm -hmm. of Samarkand. Oh yes, uh, I know the meaning of the tigers oh, yes. and gazelles. Could you share, please? Sure. Uh, the tigers uh, mean mm, young people of Uzbekistan. The gazelles mean knowledge. So young generation, young people in Uzbekistan, every time they are thirsty and hungry, they'd like to know everything because knowledge is the main priority in their life. This is the meaning. Yes, it's really interesting story and we can associate the tigers with the students of Uzbekistan as well. Uh, sure, because uh, Samarkand State University is located yes. here, yeah? Not far from here. Yes, one more thing about the tigers. The tigers, they are symbols of Samarkand even today. Even now? Yeah. Why? So, uh, every city in Uzbekistan has its own symbol. Yeah. So, uh, Samarkand symbol. Tigers, they are symbol from its foundation since 8th century BC. Yeah. It's the time when city was founded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is a very interesting and very famous tomb. Yes, you mentioned correctly. So I want to pay huge your attention to this place because this is one and only grave in Registan Square, which is located right in the middle of the square. And who was that guy? He was a very rich guy, yes? Yeah, approximately he was a really rich guy who was a uh, butcher. Yeah. Yeah, he can uh, be one of famous people of this time because he gave a lot of meat for the workers mm -hmm. of the construction. And was it a deal between a mayor, a ruler of Samarkand at the time, Bahadur Yelantush, yes. and himself, yes? Yes, it was a great deal, great deal, and it was... Uh, great conversation between them. So it was approximately here. Yeah, it was approximately here. In when... 17th century. Yes. Yes, that guy, he, uh, he asked uh, the mayor of the city, Bahadur Yalantush, he controlled all the process of construction and he said, Sir, could you please give me a favor? Every day I'll give you a lot of meat, as much as I can as you want, yes. but I have one condition, yes? yes? My tomb in the future should be exactly here. Yes. I think he predicted that this place will be the very famous place, not just in Uzbekistan, but in whole of the world, yes? Yes. But Yalantush, he was a smart guy. He said, you know very well, it is a uh, very uh, serious uh, job and we can't mm -hmm. finish during the month, during a year. It might be a couple of years. Yes. And he said, I'm ready. Yeah. And it was se seven years, yeah? It was seven, seven years. years. And they were not working only one or two or ten workers. There were over than hundred workers. Every day. Constructors. Yes. That's why his tomb is here. Yes. Nice. And the last one, Tilakari. Yes, Tilakari Mosque and Madrasa. At one. the same time. Yes, at the same time. I've heard uh, that inside it has a special room where it has special tradition. Yes. yes. And after this tradition, a lot of tourists uh, say just one word. Yes. Wow. Wow. We're going to show it. We're going to show you wow there. Let's go. Let's go. So it's time to show our wow effect in Telekari Mosque and Madrasa at the same time. Yes, let's do it. It is some special tradition for that, yes? Yes, before going in, I want you to look down and hold your head down and go in. Okay? Don't look anywhere. Yes. And five steps, exactly five steps, yes? yes. Let's do it together. Yes, let's do it. One, two, three, four, five. And after these five steps, you are free to look up. Five kilos of a real garden. Which makes you loud. Really, right? yes, yes, it is. And here it is a direction to Mecca. Mecca. It's a Mecca center of the mosque, which is directed to Mecca. And here should stay Imam, and yes. behind him in other prayers. Nice. It was the fact number one about Samarkand. Thank you very much. Thank you.